1949, 13 members of our community got together uh, and organized a church. Presiding Elder Sears was passing through this area organizing and uh, they invited him to come here. And those 13 African Americans signed a charter to become St. Mark's Colored Methodist Episcopal Church. My mother was one of the charter members. My father convinced his boss to supply all of the lumber and whatever was needed to construct the church. And then the pastor at that time, the Reverend J.T. Taylor, and the men of our community built the initial church. It is the oldest African-American church in Eugene. It wasn't until 1954 with the Civil Rights uh, Bill being passed that St. Mark's changed its name to St. Mark's Christian Methodist Episcopal Church to get away from the racial implications of color. We were kind of the social hub of the black community. Uh, there was no, no place that we could go uh, to come together as a group. Uh, we were kind of cut off from mainstream Eugene because we were African Americans. From my youth, being engaged with many churches in Eugene where we exchanged pulpits or exchanged choirs or the young folks went to this church and, and shared a young people's meeting with them and then they came to our church of going to Portland uh, to visit groups. It was just a wonderful time, uh, an outreaching time where we built bridges uh, with the churches in the Eugene community. When CORE was founded here in Eugene in the late 60s, early 70s, we held the meetings here at St. Mark's. I have to tell you that there were five professors at the University of Oregon who initiated uh, setting up CORE in Eugene. And Jim Klonowski was one of the leaders of that group and he was a young professor just getting tenure at the university in the political science department. And he pulled in four of his colleagues. They began the civil rights movement here by bringing Corey in to make some changes. Uh, my brother Sam Reynolds Jr. joined that group along with Willie C. Mims and Clyde DeBerry who was an instructor at the University of Oregon. Nine, I would say 90% of the organizing and activism around the civil rights movement in Eugene uh, was facilitated here at St. Mark's. Not every member was involved in the movement and not every person involved in the movement was a member. But we felt comfortable here because this belonged to us.